friends, my brothers and sisters, the Christ was born and lived among us. We know of his parents, Mary and Joseph. Their life impacted us and gave us hope and future, a new life. Come, we who are anxious, isolated, confused, or hurt by the pandemic and the uncertainty of its effect. We can put our trust in the one who came and is with us. The one who will lead us in this time of new normal and uncertainty into the new year. Come like the Magi and the shepherds. Let us worship the Christ, the Savior of the world. Let us pray our opening prayer. Oh God, our Father, you have brought us again to the glad season when we celebrate the birth of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Grant that his Spirit may be born anew in our hearts this day, and that we may joyfully welcome him to lead us. Open our ears, that we may hear again the angelic chorus of old. Open our lips, that we too, may sing with uplifted hearts, glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill toward all, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Hi, I'm Barb Serta Warner, and I am the District Superintendent for the Northwest District. And I'm Joel Serta Warner, pastor at Faith United Methodist in Superior. And we will be leading Psalm 148, which is a responsive Psalter, and I will be reading the light print, and Joel will be reading the bold print. Praise the Lord, praise the Lord from the heavens, praise the Lord in the heights. Praise the Lord, all his angels. Praise the Lord, all his hosts. Praise the Lord, sun and moon. Praise the Lord, all shining stars. Praise the Lord, highest heaven and all above the heaven. Let them praise the name of the Lord who commanded and they were created. Who established them forever and ever and fixed their bounds which cannot be passed. Praise the Lord from the earth, sea monsters and all deeps. Fire and hail, snow and smoke, Stormy wind fulfilling God's command. Mountains and all hills, fruit trees and all cedars. Beasts and all cattle, creeping things and flying birds. Kings of the earth and all peoples, princes and all rulers of the earth. Young men and maidens together, old men and children. Let them praise the name of the Lord, whose name alone is exalted, whose glory is above earth and heaven. God has raised up a horn for his people. Praise for all his faithful ones, for the people of Israel who are near their God. Praise the Lord. Amen. Well, hello, young disciples. My name is Pastor Kate, and this is Rocky. And Rocky and I want to share with you a few words about these days after Christmas. We hope that you had a wonderful Christmas season, but we know that this year might have been a little bit hard for you. Maybe you didn't get to do some of the activities that you normally do, or you had to do them on Zoom. Maybe you didn't get to see some of the people that you usually see, and that would be sad and lonely too. Well, you know, sometimes that happens. Rocky, is a rescue dog. That means that he was homeless for a while. He didn't have a family or any place to live. And he went to a shelter and that's where we adopted him. And now his life is a little easier and he loves us so much and we love him. When Jesus was a tiny baby, you know, he was born in a stable with animals all around. But shortly after that, his family had to leave that place because Bethlehem was no longer safe for them. And they had to move around a little bit. 
and that can be hard. And they were strangers. And finally, they settled in Nazareth. And that's where Jesus ended up growing up. And so for you, maybe you have had to move and you knew what it was like to be a stranger. And you really appreciated when someone was especially kind to you or if you knew that God was watching over you and keeping you safe. And if you meet a stranger, you know as a disciple of Jesus, as a follower of Jesus, as someone who learns from Jesus, that it's your job to be kind to others, to be a friend, and to be loving to other people. So just like baby Jesus and Rocky, it's important that when you're a stranger, you seek out God's love and you look for other people that can be kind and helpful. And if you meet strangers, it's your job to be kind and loving toward them so that they may feel God's love and they may feel welcome. Can you remember that? Let's pray together. Oh God, Help us to remember that you are always with us and you love us, even when times are hard, even when we're unhappy or lonely, that you are there loving us and watching over us. And that when we're a stranger in a new land, you are especially welcoming and loving of us. And that it's our job when we meet people who are new to our area, to our, to our school, to our neighborhood, to our church, to anywhere we, where we are, is to love them like Jesus would love them. Help us to remember this every day. Amen.
the gospel reading from the book of Matthew, chapter 2, beginning at verse 13. When they, the Magi, had gone, an angel of the Lord appeared to Joseph in a dream. Get up, he said. Take the child and his mother and escape to Egypt. Stay there until I tell you, for Herod is going to search for the child to kill him. So Joseph got up, took the child and his mother during the night and left for Egypt, where he stayed until the death of Herod. And so was fulfilled what the Lord had said through the prophet, Out of Egypt I called my son. When Herod realized that he had been outwitted by the Magi, he was furious, and he gave orders to kill all the boys in Bethlehem and its vicinity who were two years old and under, in accordance with the time he had learned from the Magi. Then what was said through the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. A voice is heard in Ramah weeping in great mourning, Rachel weeping for her children and refusing to be comforted because they are no more. After Herod died, an angel of the Lord appeared in a dream to Joseph in Egypt and said, Get up, take the child and his mother and go to the land of Israel. For those who were trying to take the child's life are dead. So he got up, took the child and his mother, and went to the land of Israel. But when he heard that Archelaus was reigning in Judea, in place of his father Herod, he was afraid to go there. Having been warned in a dream, he withdrew to the district of Galilee, and he went and lived in a town called Nazareth. So was fulfilled what was said through the prophets, he will be called a Nazarene. This is the gospel of our Lord for the people of God. Amen. Lectura del Evangelio según San Mateo capítulo 2, versículo 13 al 23. Después que partieron ellos, un ángel del Señor apareció en sueños a José y le dijo, Levántate, toma al niño y a su madre y huye a Egipto. Permanece allá hasta que yo te diga porque acontecerá que Herodes buscará al niño para matarlo. Entonces él despertando tomó de noche al niño y a su madre y se fue a Egipto. Estuvo allí hasta la muerte de Herodes para que se cumpliera lo que dijo el Señor por medio del profeta cuando dijo de Egipto. Llamé a mi hijo. Herodes entonces cuando se vio burlado por los sabios se enojó mucho y mandó matar a todos los niños menores de dos años que había en Belén y en todos sus alrededores conforme al tiempo indicado por los sabios. Entonces se cumplió lo dicho por el profeta Jeremías cuando dijo voz fue oída en Ramá Grande lamentación, lloro y gemido, Raquel que llora a sus hijos y no quiso ser consolada porque perecieron. Pero después que murió Herodes, un ángel del Señor apareció en sueños a José en Egipto y le dijo, levántate, toma a tu niño y a su madre y vete a la tierra de Israel porque han muerto los que procuraban matar al niño. Entonces él se levantó, tomó al niño y a su madre y se fue a tierra de Israel. Pero cuando oyó que Arquelago reinaba en Judea en lugar de su padre Herodes, tuvo temor de ir allá. Y avisado por revelación en sueños, se fue a la región de Galilea y se estableció en la ciudad que se llama Nazaret, para que se cumpliera lo que fue dicho por los profetas que había de ser llamado Nazareno. Palabra de Dios para el pueblo de Dios. Amen. May God bless and enable you to celebrate a beautiful life in Jesus Christ. It has been a marvelous advent and Christmas tide. Our Savior was born to us with a great peace and unlimited joy. I would like to use this opportunity to say thank you for our beloved clergy colleagues and all the Methodist siblings in Wisconsin for your faithful and loving work and dedications. 
Our gospel reading today may have a much to say to us at the end of this difficult and challenging years. I draw three parallels with our current situation with three messages of hope and grace in response. The first parallel between the plight of Mary, Joseph, and the baby Jesus is that of living in fear under a threat. For the most of us, 2020 has been such a time living with the anxiety, fear, and sense of helplessness in the face of the coronavirus. Few people operate well under high levels of uninterrupted stress. The fear changes our priorities and our focus. Many people find it disrupts their sleep. Others are distracted and struggle to concentrate. Some become irritable and impatient. Over time, stress and anxiety can build up like steam, a pressure cooker looking for release. Rarely does that release come out in positive and productive way, though I must say I am deeply impressed by many of the stories I have heard and the videos I have seen where people have been very creative and inspiring in the ways they are coping with the pandemic. Sometimes people talk about doubt being the opposite of faith, but I believe fear is the opposite of the faith. Our faith is a rock, a foundation, a source of strength and courage and hope. Individually and corporately, our faith functions to keep us anchored and confident. Regardless of external circumstance, our internal faith based prevents us from despair and surrender. Truly, we hold fast to the truth that God can do all things through those who believe and stand firm in their faith. In many congregations, the COVID-19 has not been weakened relationship and connection, but strengthened them. Our physical presence while a valuable and wonderful gift, but is not essential to staying strong as the one body of Christ. We are one in Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to the, all the world as our communion returns regularly affirms, whether we are together in body or in spirit. The second parallel is a reality-shifting displacement and the need to isolate and hide for protection. We love our homes and the safety and security they bring, but for many, home has been more of a prison than a castle this year. Rhythms of going to work, to school, to shop, to play, to travel, and to exercise, to party, and to celebrate in worship have all been disrupted, often causing great loss and grief. Few of us were prepared to socially distance and self-isolate and quarantine. Separation can be deeply painful especially when the separation takes us away from those who are ill and suffering and in assisted living or dying. We have missed it. proms, graduation, weddings, funerals, birthdays, and anniversaries. Many have lost their job, financial security, and school socialization benefit of in-person learning and access to base and essential services. For some, this has been an inconvenience, while for others, it has been earth-shaking 
if not earth-shattering. Those who have been well connected through their communities of faith have had a much greater support than those weathering this time on their own. Our entire paradigm has shifted it. There will never be a return to the same normal we experienced it before, but we will emerge into a new normal. Just as Mary and Joseph could not return to life as they knew it before, we will come to a new reality in our future. Whenever I have a time to relax and I would like to meditate and play with the single-mindedness, whether you eat or drink or whatever else you do, do all for the glory of God. See as it were under a single ray of light. God hold the world, you and me, and all in God's palm. The all, natural objects, human activities, and social structures, all takes on a power and unity. I think new normal comes with the joy, with the moral fullness of us. Not in partial, but for the whole. Not for me but for us, not for just the United States, but the whole world. We are truly interdependent and rely on each other. We speak the humility, true humility, the loving relationship with others and move toward the community than individual. And this lead to the third parallel and this will pass and we will find a new life, a new possibility on the other side of the pandemic. We will grieve the loss of what we leave behind, but we will have a new opportunity to thrive and grow, and we will see a future in our next generation. Just as Mary and Joseph redesigned their lives around the baby Jesus, we can begin to make changes and adjustments that will create a safer, stronger future for our children and grandchildren. The Im and I were blessed in 2020 with the, the birth of our first grandchild, Sydney Grace. We have been luckier than most people in that we had have had it many opportunities to visit her, to hold her, and to celebrate her first year. But even so, this has been a challenging time, always being very careful to make sure everyone is safe and healthy and well. I cannot fully express the joy and the, such a pleasure we receive from Sydney Grace. I need to confess that our precious and blessed moments I have received it by my first granddaughter. She was born into a very different world in 2020 than she would have been in any other year. And she will grow up in a very different world than she might have if there were no COVID-19. When they grow, they will talk about 2020, COVID-19 years. Our God is a God of new life. But the world is a world of many challenges and trials and difficulties. But by faith, we receive the assurance that the goodness and grace of God is greater and mightier than any the danger, threat, or challenge. From time to time, we will enter tunnels of darkness, but Christ is the light of the world, gifted from God, and the world can never extinguish the divine glory and light. There is always light at the end of the tunnel. 
So we are on the threshold of 2021. A new year, a new beginning, a new opportunity to not only survive, but thrive. The vaccines are on the horizon for all who need them that has the great potential to bring the current pandemic threat to the end. We are entering a time of re-engagement and reconnection where we have opportunity to share the abundant fruit of God's Holy Spirit with everyone. We can be agents and distributors of God's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, and faithfulness, and gentleness, and self-control as Paul describes in Galatians. Chapter 5, 22, verse 23. 2021 is a blank pilot, a clean slate, a fresh canvas upon which we can paint a vision for a healthier, kinder, more merciful, and just world. All we have learned from the challenges of 2020 provide a platform for improvement and recovery. I dream of a Wisconsin conference that is known far and wide as a safe and welcoming, inclusive, and just a statewide community of faith and grace. I believe that radical inclusion where we openly welcome the most marginalized and vulnerable, and racial justice, where equity, mercy, respect, and peace building should be the norm for all people and the priority for all our charges and congregations. The kingdom, the kingdom of God proclaimed by Jesus and described by Paul and John should not be a far of desire, but a current reality that all Christian disciples commit to partner with God to create. The kingdom, the kingdom of God is with us in Jesus Christ, but the power of the Holy Spirit, my siblings in Christ, and a beloved members in the body of Christ, I pray for you all that you celebrate a blessed Christmas and that you will welcome the coming new year as a gift to us from God. Let us truly honor and value these sacred gifts and work hard in this new year to become the witness for God's love and grace to the world that God needs us to be. We have faced it, the dangers. We are living through the disruptions, and we are emerging into the resurrection light of God through Christ Jesus. Journey forward with our magi toward Epiphany, with open hearts and open minds, ready to receive the revelation of that God has in store for each of us. Rejoice, for Christ has come. The light of the world and the hope for our future. Thanks be to God. my 
Invite us to share a time of prayer together this morning. I hope you had a wondrous Advent and a glorious Christmas. But as we come to the end of the year, uh, for many this has been a very challenging year. We have a lot of things that we want to lift up and, and perhaps leave behind as we enter into 2021. I want to invite us to share in a time of brief silence, to offer our personal prayers, and then I will offer a pastoral prayer, followed by the Lord's Prayer, which I invite you to pray in whatever language is most comfortable for you. So let us enter a time of silence together. Let us pray. Wonderful God, we are still basking in the glow of the divine light of your most precious gift, Jesus the Christ. We receive with joy what you have given to us, the light, the hope, and the promise. And we look forward to a future with great anticipation for healing, for employment, for safe relationships where we can be together once more. But we also reflect on this past year that has been so challenging and so difficult for so many. For a global pandemic. For the social unrest and the incidence of racial injustice. For a very contentious election and political process that has so divided so many people. Lord, there has been harm in this year 2020. Some of it is global, some of it is social, some of it is very, very personal. And so we seek your healing. We are so glad that the Prince of Peace has come to earth once more that we might 
see possibilities for reconciliation, for building bridges, for healing wounds, and moving in new directions. We ask, Lord, that you be in each one of us to strengthen us, to encourage us, and to motivate us to reach out to one another in whatever way possible to share your love and kindness and grace with others. This truly has been a difficult year, but we have gotten through it together. And it is together that we move into the new year. The star of Epiphany is still shining. And there are people who are seeking to meet their Savior. As we go into this new year, let us seek with an open heart. And Lord, help us to be ready to receive the blessings that you are so ready to give. Blessings that you ask us to share with everyone we meet. Lord, we are so grateful for Jesus. We are so grateful for his life that is to come. And it is in his name and by his grace that we pray together the prayer that he taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. I'd like to invite us now to prepare to make offering to God. I know that in this digital day, it's a little different than making our offering and taking it to the altar. But still, we have opportunity to make a commitment in our hearts and whatever actions we can take to support the work, the mission, and the ministry of our churches. This is a way to honor and glorify God. And so let us make offering at this time. Let us pray. Gracious God, receive the gifts of our hearts, these gifts of our labors, these gifts which we give that your good work might be done in the world. Lord, we give what we can. We give because we love you and we love our neighbors. And we want to see your glorious work accomplished in this world. Bless our offerings, we ask humbly, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hear these words of blessing from Fra Giovanni, written in 1513. I salute you. There is nothing I can give you which you have not, but there is much that while I cannot give, you can take. No heaven can come to us unless our hearts find rest in it today. Take heaven. No peace lies in the future which is not hidden in this present instant. Take peace. The gloom of the world is but a shadow, yet behind it, within our reach, is joy. Take joy. And so at this Christmas time, I greet you with the prayer that for you now and forever, the day breaks and the shadows flee away. Christmas blessing, new birth, new life to you today and always. In the name of Christ, amen.